exciting, I think, Faith? Yeah, absolutely. Incredibly exciting, but also more than anything else, it gives us a basically a historical understanding of just what this country has had to overcome in order to, to, in order to get to where it is today. I'm talking here about one of the bloodiest days in Amazulu history, as well as the most significant anti-colonial clash where over 2,000 Zulu warriors and 800 British troops lost their lives in the Battle of Isandwana. Well, producer and historian Mbuso Koza is bringing that skirmish to life. The Isandwana Lecture, the musical, is being performed, of course, at the State Theatre. Mbambuso Koza joining us now, as you can see in studio, to tell us more about it. What you're seeing there in your picture is what's going to be the performance that's about to happen. But before we get there, we need to ask the man, the brains behind it, the man that is going to give us, um, of course, just this walk down history and what it is that maybe South Africans don't know. Mbambuso Koza, good morning to you. Uh, thank you so much for coming into studio and just joining us this morning. You know, it's it's it's... It's so much that has been spoken about Amazon, yes. you know, the Zulu culture. Yes. You know, there's so much history that has been relived, especially, you know, during the process of the change of, yes. of, of, of the throne and Mrs. Zulu coming onto the throne. But there, I think there's still so much information missing, so much knowledge that is not being shared exactly about the Battle of Isandra. Yes. Where are we not, where is it all missing? What we need to understand, this battle put an end to an end, I mean, the Napoleonic uh, dynasty, because Prince Imperial was the son of Napoleon, was here, and he died uh, I mean, in this battle in 1879. And the intangible heritage uh, that we've lost, the way we sing, we're given uh, a hymn book after the Battle of Isandan, and we completely forgot about who we are, and even wearing like this, it became a shame because of, of the missionaries. So we need to relook and reimagine if, if we did not come across with, I mean, with these people, how were we going to evolve as, as Africans? And say, it means we need to see new architects, I mean, architectures in, in, this, in this country by Africans. If we look around, we must see ourselves. So I think that's what the Petty of Isandra symbolizes. So I'll be presenting this lecture at the State Theatre uh, this coming Friday, Saturday and Sunday. Yeah. You know, because as you're speaking about the battle, I think more than anything else, yes. it's not just about what was lost that day. Yes. There was subsequently what was lost in South Africa and our historical knowledge system, our indigenous knowledge system, our alchemy, so as it yes. were, right? And, yes. and having to see that even in a democratic dispensation, right, mm -hmm. the knowledge systems, the alchemy mm -hmm. that was lost, it seems as though it's still being perpetuated <coughs> even today under the so-called Freedom Charter, so as it were, uh -huh. right? Uh -huh. Which is completely mm -hmm. false. Mm -hmm. So we're giving people a false narrative mm -hmm. of the true reflection of how how we have lost true. as a people. Very true. To an extent that um, the promotion of our cultures today is a fish pace. Tell me about Izangome that are increasing every day. Who are they helping? Because what, what is happening now? The misinterpretation of our culture, us making money out of one another. Hey, hey, I see your, your forefathers. Why are you not seeing money? You know. So that's a problem we're facing today. We just uh, face COVID. These people were unable to tell us, foretell us what was going to happen. So we need to really reimagine a religion and a culture itself. It needs to be cleansed because there are a lot of things. So if we look at this battle of Isandra, it's important then to say, yes, it was a, a, I mean, the most uh, bloodiest day, but what are the lessons if we were to do the aftermath? But, so, uh, yes. You know, you would. There's a lot of tribalism in South Africa. Yes. A whole. It's one of the pandemics, in fact, that this country yes. faces. And when you are seeing Ubambuso Koza proudly, you know, going to the state theatre to teach and lecture yes. about the Battle of Isandwana, you will have other tribes and and, 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 and and people from different tribes in the country saying, you know, there go the Zulu people, thinking that they are the, the most important. Yes. yes but yes. where maybe. Basoto, Babedi, Batswana, yes. you know, the Kosas don't maybe see yes. this as an opportunity to maybe take pride in your own, you know, mm -hmm. come forth and teach about what it is that you, those in South Africa may not know about being Mosoto, about being Mopedi, about being Mutswana, you know, that, yes, you see the Zulus being proud of who they are, yes. being proud to tell their stories, that gives you an opportunity as an African to tell your story mm. from your particular tribe. Is that maybe what, you talk about how there needs to be a cleansing of 
of African culture. Yes. Could that be one of the other things that perhaps needs to be relooked? Is why do we look at each other's tribes as though, yeah, when we think you're better exactly. than the other, instead of yeah. what, what can I learn from that particular tribe and why they are so proud of themselves? Mm, this, again, this thing, when you go to Drangensberg and you take in some water there and you put them on different containers and put labels, at the end of the day, we, we are humans. Mm. You know, this thing is an illusion that there is movement, that there is man. It's traveling, and the language does not develop from ethnicity. It develops from migrating. You know, this is why we have a Mongoni today who moved with Ulukuzano in 1820. Uh, when they they moved to uh, I mean Iza, Zambia, mm -hmm. and then when they got the Aban Bakulum is low. So when children were born, but by Mangon, that was a mispronunciation of Mungun. Mm. That can be dated back as far as the times of Kuni. They were Kunites. One thousand years ago, we have Umgun the first, who is a, a father to all Amangun. On the Zulu side, is the father to Ulfen. Ulfen is the father to Ukumet. Ukumet is the father to Umgun the second. Umgun the second is the father to Uluzman. Uluzman is the father to Malandela. Uh, Malandela is the father to Ugwabe and Zulu. And that's how the Zulu dynasty began. So if Amapedi, Bapedi, Basut were to get inspired by what I'm doing, I think this country would go on flames in terms of the love of who we are. Of course, you know, yes. uh, we cannot wait for yes. the performance that we're going to have yeah. and witness uh, after the break. But I do yes. thank you more than anything else. I think thank you for starting the conversations that allow us to tell the story of our history. Mm. And hopefully from our history, we can learn so that we can better yes. our present and better our future. So I'm going to leave you to go and prepare uh, yes. as we do uh, welcome for the performance of the Battle of Isandra. Make sure that you check it out as is happening at the State Theatre, yeah. um, uh, South African State Theatre that is. Make yourself, get yourself tickets. Tickets are available, of it's course, 24 right? 24 to 26. 24 to 26. Six state theatre. Uh, state theatre. Get yourself tickets. You do not want to miss it. More than anything else, it's about the education yeah. of our people. That performance is coming up after the break.